We have uh, launched into, we were in, we're right midway into a series entitled Inside Out, and we were in dealing with uh, several particular points, uh, the first one being purpose, and um, then we dealt with last week passion, and I want to encourage you, if you missed any of those, to go back and listen to them. They're on our page on YouTube as well as in our app, and then um, today I want to talk about perseverance. And so um, the reality of it is, which I know you would agree with me, that life is absolutely difficult. Um, uh, okay, uh, I, life has um, some challenges connected to it. And um, oftentimes navigating those challenges become very difficult as well. And so uh, if you're turning in your Bible, looking where I'm going to be, James 1, if you uh, would turn there, James 1, and I'm going to read there in a minute, but I realize that God uh, does not promise us an easy life. Matter of fact, it seemed, if I could talk to a few people that remember before they gave their life to Christ, it seemed as if life might have been easier when I did not deal with spiritual matters. That's a trick. Because you were in the battle, but just not aware that you was getting beat up. And so uh, there is without question um, uh, that life would go through these ups and downs and hills and valleys. But I realize that God did not promise us easy life even when we come to Christ. But he does promise to be with us and help carry us through hard times. And so the knowledge of that gives us the perseverance when life gets tough. And so it becomes a difference maker when we function in faith, knowing that God is with us. And for a few minutes, I want to talk to you from that thought, the difference maker. The difference maker. I realize that the difference maker is when faced with life's dilemmas, decisions, and difficulties, you choose to use principles of faith with an unwavering wavering fortitude to walk in God's best for your life. And that's ultimately what the difference maker happens for believers. And so in James 1, it kind of sets it up for us. If you're there, James 1, and I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. And um, it reads as such, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Good gracious, that was good. All right, all right, all right. Some didn't catch it. Let's 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 kind of grab that and go the NIV version. Same context of this. He says, "Consider it pure, pure joy, my brothers and sisters, if you allow me to read it from a different version. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your, of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work." Say it again. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking. Ooh, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. So, so, so I, was, I was in this text and I, I got so excited because the revelation that God gave me in this that perseverance has an ability to develop my maturity and complete me. I have to let it finish. I, I can't stop. And too many times, uh, I don't know about you, we have stopped short of where we should have. I can't be the only one. Uh, too often, um, uh, it, it was like we're right at the verge, and it was not until the opportunity passed or to the situation had gone on that you recognized that had you gone a little bit further, you would have made it through and you would have received the prize that you were waiting for. May I offer a warning label to you? That Satan is absolutely plotting to get you out of a set place. 
He's trying to, without question, move you out of a place of peace, consistently functioning into a place of chaos. He's operating and trying to get you out of love, breaking your trust at any corner he can. He's functioning, trying to get you in a place where you are literally confused and you do not understand purpose and you don't have no passion to move forward and you're wondering why you keep starting and stopping. Ultimately, he's pushing to trying to forfeit the promise of God on your life and to initiate what I like to call a quit spirit. I quit. An inability to preserve and you just shut down. And, and, on, and you shut down first. Watch this. Many of us shut down first on the inside before anybody see anything. And so people are talking to you, but already in your mind and in your heart, you have already made up your mind to quit and to not go any further. And so that's because the outside circumstances the enemy has placed on you, and he, he just wants you to put that quit spirit in you. We have to understand that the will of God is that you maximize purpose, maximize passion, and maximize perseverance through faith. And, um, and we, got to, we got to do better. Come on, somebody say, I got to do better. We have to do better because we're living in a, a time where there are these trials. Let's go back to the text. There are consistent troubles and situations coming our way, but we're counting those troubles as uh, I need to shift or move. Forfeiting the perseverance necessary to mature us. Okay, all right, y'all missed it. Uh, there are, um, there are uh, things, uh, people, places that are consistently bothering us or disrupting what we would like to have uh, what's called a quiet and peaceful life. And we're, we're misinterpreting those as um, from the devil. The devil is doing busy. When it is potentially possible, based off the text, that there are opportunities of joy. So um, uh, we're, we, we have to get to the point where we're living by faith. And the element of it is a matter of choice. Somebody say it's a matter of my choice. To overcome unexpected distractions. Oh, come on, somebody. I have to choose to overcome unexpected distractions. Let's go back. He says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity. Now, I already know. Some of y'all are like, that's not opportunity. Maybe opportunity to smack someone. Maybe opportunity to do something else. But I don't feel like it's an opportunity. It might be the opportunity for me to go off on somebody. But no, it's an opportunity, he says, for great joy. So that must mean we need to, we need to change our thinking. Somebody, go ahead, just... Help, help me. Watch this because the perfection of maturity is the progression product of perseverance. That means every time I allow myself to go through a situation, God is perfecting my ability to persevere or to endure. Let me take a little further because there's a mindset that goes along with this. I need a, um, a difference maker mindset. And I have to get it because that is what's going to motivate me to, get to, to really push past where I am. Now, there are four types of people uh, that are uh, present and you, you're motivated by different things. First of all, some people are motivated by personal gain. You know what? I, if I'm going to get mine, then I'll do it. Y'all in the room, don't, you don't have to wave your hand. Like, if you, look, if I'm, I'm going to get mine. If I ain't get mine, ain't no reason for me to do what you want me to do because I don't see anything in it for. Now, when that's your motivation, it's short term. And it's tough because when situations come up, come on, when things happen, if you don't get nothing, then that, I'm done. I'm absolutely done. I don't even know why we're doing this. You can stop right now because I don't see why I'm, what I'm getting out of this. 
you're in the room. Okay, keep looking at me, because I can tell you, y'all want to give yourself away. Then there's people who are motivated by possible giving. I'm giving with the possibility that uh, it's going to make me feel good. How many, y'all can raise your hand for that one. You know you give, and you're like, this, oh, you know, I'm giving. I'm trying to be kind. I'm trying to be the Christian thing. You know, so I'm giving with that possibility that my giving is helping you. And then the moment you see that you're being taken advantage of, wow. you know what? You know what? You ain't going to just take my stuff and use it how you want to. Well, I thought you was giving it. Well, I was giving it, but I wanted to be used the way I wanted to be used. So you ain't going to use it just any old way. No, 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 no. It was given, but I thought you gave it to me. You were giving it to me. I was, but now that I know you don't really need it. But were you giving it or were you not giving it? I was giving it, but the way I believe it should be used. I'm just, I'm going to keep moving because I don't want to stay there too long. Because some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Everybody get it? I'm moving. And then there's people who are motivated by public gratification. That means, uh, simply put, uh, you'll give or you'll do based off of if I'm going to get a physical, like somebody going to see me do it. As long as they see me do it, I, oh, look at me. I'm doing it. And so you're doing your thing, but somebody got to see you. When nobody's able to see you, you ain't doing it the same no more. You was giving it wholeheartedly. You was all in. I mean, you was moving stuff and doing stuff and serving, but nobody see you in the background. Now, yeah, I'm not in the mood for this no more. Well, what changed? The motivation was I need to make sure somebody knew I was doing it. If no one knew I was doing it, then it don't have the same effect and that, see, that, that's the difference maker. See, that, you can't persevere. It, th those individuals can't persevere for long term because they need a, a continued gratification by public adulation. Yeah, somebody got to be, oh, you're so good. Oh, you did great. You're so great. And you need them to cheer you on. And the moment the cheers stop, nobody here but somebody you know. There's a fourth one, and I think this is the highest one. This is where we got to uh, ascend to. When people are motivated by pleasing God. When your motivation is to please God, that's when you go above and beyond what someone asks you to do. Not for the person, but because you understand who you're trying to please. You persevere all the way past. Oh, I only asked for this. Yeah, but I got you a couple of samples. I didn't know what you wanted. Or why'd you do all that? Well, you know, don't know, just wanted to be, you know, over the top. See, when it's to please God and not just the person, that's when you can make your spouse happy. That, that's when your family members are like, whoa, they, whenever I go to their house, they cook a lot of food. I like on that. Oh, some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, there are, without question, um, the order that God's trying to get you to please him is when you have what's called a spiritual conviction, come on, spiritual conviction of heart to choose to obey God and do things that are acceptable to God and beyond what, God, what God's expecting. You're saying, God, I want to blow your mind. Now, you can't, but it's good to try. Can I push you to, the, to my first point? That was all intro stuff to get you where you need to go. Y'all ready? All right, watch this. When you walk by faith, you don't have to know how God's going to perform his word. Endurance and perseverance are developed when my faith is involved, yes? So watch this. The Bible tells us, for every child of God defeats th this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. So the principle of me to, to do and get past where the trouble is happening in my life is to operate in faith. I may not know how it's going to come about, but I know by faith I, I must operate. Okay, all right. Y'all so excited. Your enthusiasms. 
overwhelming me right now. Let's go a little further into the text. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, and uh, let's start at the third verse. Dear brothers and sisters, we can't help but thank God for you because your faith is flourishing and your love for one another is growing. We proudly, watch this, look at the condition. I need you to understand the condition. The condition on how, while, while their love is growing for them, look what it says. We proudly tell God's other churches about your, are y'all reading? Is it your endurance and faithfulness and all the persecution and hardships you're suffering. Y'all missed this. I'll read it again. They're telling other churches about the hardships and the endurance and the faithfulness of the church because they're able to still shine or still give the fruit of the spirit while they're going through stuff. And it says while they're going through this stuff, their love for one another is growing. Okay, so watch this. So that means, hmm, oh, man. How many married couples we got here? Let me see. Married people. Lift your hand. Married. Okay. Relationship. You got family? Lift your hand. Not just joking. Just joking. <laughs> this is going to challenge you. Are y'all ready for this? It is potentially possible that in the midst of strife, bad circumstance, is when God develops love. It is pretend, I, I, I'm going I just want to, I hate to rock you. It is when things in your family life, in your marriage, in your relationship with someone is going absolutely chaotic that God develops love. I can tell you I don't like this. Go back to the text. Y'all might need to pull it out. We don't have it up on the screen. You gotta pull your Bible out. Pull your, come on, pull it out. Second Thessalonians. I want you to see it for yourself. Pull your device, your Bible, whatever way you look at it. All right, watch this. Second Thessalonians 1. Tell me when you get it. Say amen, something. Okay, got enough people got it. Watch this. Second Thessalonians 1. All right, let's skip down. The third verse. You ready? He says, dear brothers and sisters, we can't help but thank God for you. He's thanking them. Because your faith is flourishing and your love for one another is growing. You got it? It's growing and it's flourishing. Under what condition is it flourishing and growing? Read verse 4. Come on. We proudly tell God's other churches about your endurance and faithfulness in all the persecution and hardships you're suffering. <laughs> Stop right there. So watch this. So that means they're going through something. Yes, it could be, oh, they got something going on in the church. There's stuff going there. Uh, other people don't like what they're uh, doing with serving God. But then there's also the condition of you can, there's no way that nothing was going on in their own family. Stuff was going on, and the condition of their love was growing. Why? Because the difference maker is when trials and trouble is going, there's opportunity of great joy while going through what I'm going through. Now, I know you don't like that condition, but that's where the faith of God operates. And now I'm supposed to administer the love of God while chaos and hell is breaking loose in my family. The only difference between a believer and a non-believer. I just gave it to you. The rock of believership <laughs> is your ability to allow love to increase when things are going crazy. I'm in the scripture, guys. Come on. Can I help you a little further? Watch this. God will only give you information based on a need-to-know basis. And while 
You're in the situation. You might not need to know any more information, but keep going. <laughs> uh, there, are, there are too many times that we get stuck on the problem and not the process of what God's doing in you. He's developing something in you, and the process always feels like you should quit, but God says the problem was designed for you to persevere, not stop. I can tell y'all don't like me, but I promise you I'm giving you good medicine. See, here, here's, here, here's, here's the problem. You believe so much in the natural that you don't consider the spiritual realm when you're going through something. Come on, one amen. Let me get one. You consider what you're going, so much so that you cannot harness the spiritual realm in those moments, and that's why you have believers that are breaking down in problems and not able to persevere. You cutting everybody. I'm, you're done. You're done. You're done. You're done. We're done. Let's go back to pr purpose. Purpose gives me an indicator of who I need in my life and who I don't need. If I understand who I need in spite of the rockiness of the relationship, I'll have enough passion to persevere while we going through something. Okay, okay, I got to I got to I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So watch this. You can't see electric electricity, but you know it's there. Even though you can't see it, you know there are, there are electrons, there's all this stuff, and what they have done is they have harnessed what is not visible to see. Okay. They have harnessed wind, and you cannot see it. They have figured a way to harness it and turn it into energy. But the believer has the Bible and still can't believe that God is capable in the midst of the worst situation to turn the problem into <laughs> profit. <laughs> what if you had the ability to take every circumstance and turn it into and form some energy to keep going? How would you be catapulted? Man, you would take problems and say, give me more. They're producing for me a production line of more, of increase. They're producing for me. So I, I know what's happening next. Come on, bring it because there are opportunities of joy. There's opportunities. And it's the difference maker from those who know how to dwell and do it and those who don't. Because the ones who don't stop short of their breakthrough every single time. Let me, let, let, let me, let me, let me push you to part two of this. I got to hurry up. Oh, my God, I got to hurry up. We got to move fast, okay? Thank you. Hey, I don't know where everybody else not listening. I'll take the one. So when you walk by faith, right, you must know that God has spiritually already done what he promised he would do, which allows you to persevere. See, the, let me put it this way. The prevailing process of God, things are already done in the spiritual realm. That's how it operates. He already, he, he finishes a thing and then he says, okay, now it can begin. So what I have to do is get out the natural realm so much enough to go in the spiritual realm and say, God, it's already done. I declare it, now manifest it. Watch this. The state, your state in your life depends on the choice you make in desperate and difficult times. Let's go scripture. Bible says, today I'll give to you a choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now, I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. He says, I'll put before you the blessing and curses. You have to make the decision by the confession of your faith to declare what you want. How many times have you been in a situation and you have mistakenly chose death? I better keep moving. Let's, let's, let's go example. Um, disciples, Jesus, they just, they, he, they, he just, they just seen him perform a miracle. 
What did they just see him do? He said, let's get in the boat, go on the other side. Many of them were fishermen. They get in the boat. A storm comes. This must have been a storm that they've never seen before because they all were scared and said they were going to die. Jesus is asleep on the boat. And he said, look, he sleep peacefully to me. I don't know if y'all would, would agree with me. If I seen Jesus sleep, I would be calm. No, I'm not the only one, right? Jesus on your boat. The wind is blowing. He sleep. This is Jesus. Y'all hanging out with him. No, I'm just put yourself with Jesus. You hanging out with Jesus. You're on the boat. The boat starts rocking real bad, but Jesus still asleep. Like, him sleep, I'm chilling. Because I know his purpose. I see him perform miracles. He not going to die in this storm. Unfortunately, what we do, Jesus is on your boat. <laughs> He's on your boat. He's with you in the storms. Yet there are times when you're looking at the storm and you're trying to jump ship. When God said, wait, we ain't getting off, I said, we're going to the other side. There's something I called us to do, and it's not going to stop right here. And that's when you have to buckle in and persevere and endure the test. And God says, I'll show up once we get to the other side. Jesus has to wake up and say, be still. And speak to the nature of things even though he already knew the storm was already calm to him because I could sleep through it. What you don't realize, and, and oftentimes we don't realize that uh, God is already has a handle on your circumstance. This is the testing of your faith. There are certain circumstances God is testing your faith. And some of us, dare I say it, are failing continually. And that's why you're continually get, going through the same. Uh, uh, until you pass your own test. Meaning there are certain things that I, I, really, honestly, they don't, they don't mess with me no more. There are certain areas I just, you know, I'm over when you get over something, that means someone could put it in your face and it still doesn't bother you. Oh, I better move. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. Okay. Somebody catching this? Okay. Give me a second just to give you these last two points, would you? We need perseverance faith. And what that is, it, it allows you to speak in agreement with what is promised regardless of the circumstance. It's important. That means that I'm able to speak to a situation and declare it. Even though it doesn't look like it, I'm able to still speak to it because I'm operating off of faith, not off of the situation. Now, this is important because too many of us get caught up in the people. How many of us get messed up when somebody, there's, there's somebody that gets us off course? Real, real quick. That's it? I thought the whole, okay, all right. Somebody, meaning somebody presses your buttons. Could be on your job, could be in your home, could be in the store, it could be in church. Somebody knows how this, that one person knows how to, just when things, you all right, you skipping. Inside, there's a skip on the inside. Where am I talking? Somebody know what I'm talking about. There's a skip on the inside. It's like, ah, ah, ah. And that person come, you're like. <laughs> Mess the skip up. You can't even skip right. You can't get the skip right because you all off balance. I'm trying to get it, but what happened was you forget what the Bible says about the situation. He says, put on the He said, put on the armor. So that what? You'll be able to stand what? Firm, you can still skip. Against the, I like what he calls it, the schemes of the devil. It's a scheme. I mean, it ain't even a real thing. It's a trickery. And so too many of us are being tricked by schemes. Okay, hold on. Okay, okay. Let's stay in the scripture. Let's stay in the scripture. 
For our struggle is not against, say it again, not against who? Who you always mad with? How come you still fighting with flesh and blood knowing that scripture? You know that scripture, but you still get upset with people. <laughs> and then you're trying to persevere, but when you get upset with people, you can't persevere no more because I can't stand your guts right now. I need a minute from you. I need small breaks from you right now. I'll see you later. Please just, mm. They texting you like this, mm. Don't know. Oh, I text you. I don't know. I missed it. My fault. I didn't get that message. Well, you got all the other messages. Well, that one didn't come through. What is it? Flesh and blood. Let's go a little further. I got to move quicker. But against, watch this, but against principalities or rulers, yes, against the powers, against the world forces of darkness. No, no. I, oh, I got, whoa. Can y'all let me take some time on this? Oh, no. Tell me. Okay, okay. Against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. So he says against the rulers. So he says there are rulers operating that I got to be aware of, but there, there are four elements. Y'all see this, right? Rulers and against power. And then there's the spiritual forces of wickedness. Now, I, what, I, what got me was the, the third one, world forces of darkness. That means these may seem natural to you. These might seem the world forces, meaning there is just darkness in our world because of sin. And so there are world forces. But he says all of it, Paul tells us that all of it, If we, he, he acknowledged the flesh and blood, but he says there's instructions on how you fight them, and it's simply put on the full armor. So that you'll be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything, stand firm. So the condition of my ability to stand firm is based on me armoring up. Now, what's the armor? Come on, talk back to me, class. Helmet of salvation. That means I'm saved. I, you ain't going to make me lose my salvation. What we do? The moment ain't nothing worse than Uncle Tommy doing his calls to Christians. Y'all don't, don't know Uncle Tommy? Y'all act like y'all didn't know what I'm talking about. Uncle Tommy. Uncle Tommy does a call to a, a deacon in the church. I'm like, Uncle Tommy, uh, we, I mean, he, go, he, go, he, he didn't make up a name, and he said, um, they want you to sit down because you be shouting on Sunday too much. And they go there, and now he's like this, well, I'm going to shout. Ain't nobody going to stop my shout. And he go in, he go in, and for a while, he's like, all right, but he, Uncle Tommy know how to, nephew, nephew Tommy, nephew Tommy know how to put a button on it. And all of a sudden, a switch, you're going to make me lose my beep, beep, beep religion. And he started losing it. Watch this. And next thing you know, the deacon is cursing. I'm like, the mother is cursing. I mean, they, I mean. I haven't, the pastor, I, they had a pastor. I'm like this. They have not found one believer yet. That I, I, have, I don't know, maybe they have. The ones I heard, they about three minutes into the call, they took off the helmet of salvation. No, I need you to know something. Helmet of salvation, come on, quickly. What else? Okay, breastplate of righteousness, come on. Belt of truth. That means I know the truth. Even though it feels like I'm wrestling against flesh and blood, I know the truth. So why am I getting upset when I got the truth on? on? No, we're getting all out of shape and you got the belt of truth. That's when you know you don't have the belt of truth on. Go on, what else? I got I got the shoes. Oh, oh I, I, yeah, that, we got the sword. The sword. Sword of spirit. Uh-huh. The word of God. And I got the shoes. Come on, I want the shoes. The shoes are what? Peace. Preparation of peace. That means, that means I'm able, when I'm clothed properly, even though situations might seem unpeaceful, I got these shoes on that allow me to walk in the peace of the Lord. 
allow me to walk in a place where it seems crazy, but I'm at peace with the situation because I'm not fighting naturally. I'm in the spirit. Oh, I wish I, I wish I had time. Okay, I gotta close. I gotta close. Oh my God. Here this final thing. I, I, I gotta close. Once we understand this. We have to get to a place where there's a productive perseverance. And that requires a level of faith, maturity, that refuses, I don't want to look at anyone, refuses to harbor offense. Uh, it, 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 refu- it, it says, you know what? You can't offend the unoffendable. <laughs> it, it basically says... You can't offend me because I won't allow you to offend me because in offense, I can't persevere. The moment I get offended, I now make dumb decisions based off of my offense. And I delay my breakthrough. Every time offense gets its head into my situation, I delay my breakthrough. Okay, let's go scripturally. Uh, Mark eleven twenty five. 25. But when you're praying, first forgive anyone you're holding a grudge against. So why? So your Father in heaven will forgive you of your sins too. So wait, God, you telling me you holding up stuff because I got a problem with so-and-so? You don't understand what they did to me. God, like, I really don't care what they did to you. This is not about your emotions. You can't forget. This ain't about your feelings. This ain't about, no, no, no. This is nothing about it. This is you getting to the spirit, tapping into the Holy Ghost. And when you tap into the Holy Ghost, I can let it go. Don't mean I forgot what you did. I'm not, not going to keep casting my pearls under swine, least they trample them under their feet. No, I got an ability to remember what you did, but not hold nothing on me. Oh, I'm at peace with this situation. See, 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 see. That defense monster will stop your ability to persevere. See, offense, watch this, forfeits the reward of faith in your life. Satan attacks our thoughts to trick us into being offended. I'll say it again. The enemy attacks your thoughts to trick you into being offended. Watch what he does. He causes us to misinterpret the innocent mistakes of others as intentional. And watch this, because somebody said, well, no, they ain't do that. That wasn't innocent. I mean, it doesn't even matter when you have the shield on, when, you have the, when, when you're armored up. It don't matter if you're intentional with it. Sticks and stones won't break my bones in this process. Spiritually, I'm all right. Ooh. We have to remember, I got to close. Oh, my gosh, I'm too far over. Gosh, you got to remember, can I help you? Forgiveness is a choice and not a feeling. Wait, y'all might need to repeat that. Forgiveness is a choice, not a feeling. Come on, say it with me. Forgiveness is a choice, not a feeling. If you make it a feeling, you won't forgive. And then you, you're hijacking your emotions whenever you get in the presence of that person. Whew. Now, we understand. Let me just, so let me, I just, I don't know who this is for. I understand. Trust is not automatic with forgiveness, but, but must be earned. I'm saying that for someone. And so I got to say that because somebody needs to hear that. Say it again. Trust is not automatic with forgiveness. Just because I forgive you don't mean I got to trust you. No, I need to help someone because you might be mixing it up. Forgiveness is my ability to say I'm not harboring it. I can still talk to you, but I ain't letting you do what you did again. Does that help? That's good? So it's important because the pain of the offense can be eradicated through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus. The pain. I'm dealing with the pain because it's the pain that caused you to stay there too long. If you can get over the pain of offense, then I can walk through this. I don't have to trust you. This ain't, it ain't about your, I ain't in my feelings. I'm just doing a choice. This is a choice. I'm good. That's why I can still talk to people. You good? Mm-hmm. You know, we were talking in men's fellowship 
I, I share with y'all, you know, my, my father comes every other week. My uh, biological father comes every, and, and, and someone walked up to me and said, how are how you, how you dealing with this? I said, I'm doing pretty good. I said, because I, I don't have no offense against him. I, I'm not harboring nothing. Um, I, I have, there's nothing there. So there's nothing to be angry about for all the years I have not seen him. It does not matter. I'm okay with my now. Well, I hope I help somebody. When you get all right, and you, that doesn't mean I'm going to trust him to show up to something I need him at. Don't mean I could call on him every moment to do something. I, that, that doesn't mean it. it. Don't mean I'm looking for birthday gifts and y'all missing it. It doesn't, doesn't mean I'm looking for anything because I'm blank. Whatever happens, I'm okay with because I'm not in my feelings. I'm making a choice. Uh, I got to stop. Perseverance faith chooses to take calculated actions in agreement with the word of God. And that's the important part. I got to make Choices not based off of my feelings, but off the facts of the word. And when I let scripture instruct my acts of faith, it changes how I function. And so many of us, we got to get to the point where we stop making choices off of our feelings. Come on, somebody. I got I to gotta change my choices. And they can't be based off of how I feel, because if it's based off how you feel, you'll never do what you need to do. That's difficult to persevere through. Because the endurance factor, the perseverance factor, has to be present when things are difficult, not when they're flowery and rosy and you skipping. It has to be when it's absolutely tumultuous. It's ridiculously hard. Now my love has a chance to grow. Talk to any marriage. Get through a rocky moment, your marriage is stronger. Hold on to whatever you were rocky with, and you got bitterness in a bad marriage. Same thing in every relationship. You have to be able to get through the difficult moments in order for it to shine right. Oh, man, I got to stop. Okay, I, I got to stop. Thursday, I'll pick up the rest. It's too many. I got a lot of notes in there, so I don't want to look at no more. Did this help one person? All right, come on. Come on and stand with me, and uh, as you stand, I need you to get your offenses in mind that you want to let go. Matter of fact, uh, do me a favor. Get everywhere that you have not functioned in faith, but you've allowed feeling to be the primary. I want you to get that in your heart. Just, we're going to release some stuff as we close today. Get every person that you need to go to and just say, you know what, I forgive you, even if they don't, they like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's okay. It's for me. Need you to get all this in your heart and just begin to ask the Lord, help me let some stuff go. Come on, come on, come on. Would you just begin to ask God, God, help let, I need to let this stuff go. One person is not going to hijack my feelings anymore. Come on, come on, come on. One situation, one circumstance that the doctor says, that the bank account reads, is not going to take me off kilter and off course. I will believe the report of the Lord and faith will be my focus. And so, Father, even now, I pray for the heart of every believer pray for those who are watching this. I pray even now that you would cause for every area of offense to be eradicated even now through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus. Help us right now to let go of situations, circumstances, and even people that we've held hostage by what they said or what they've done. God, we turn it over to you today. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would hijack emotions that have gone off kilter and off course and bring them into the obedience of God. Father, I pray that you would allow for perseverance to have its home in our hearts and mature us and complete us in this season. 
God, you know the heart of every believer here. Those who have been wrestling secret areas that have ultimately taken them off course. God, let us put the shoes on, the shoes of peace. Father, I thank you even now for the sword of the spirit that gives us the ability to cut through stuff that needs to be removed from our lives. Father, give us clarity of purpose so we know who don't, who's not necessary in this next season and who is absolutely necessary, but they're difficult to deal with, but we are without question able to handle it. So Father, I pray now for souls and lives, oh God, to be transformed even now. And if there's one today that's not saved, one today that's backslidden, one today, oh God, that needs to unite themselves with your plan, I pray for them even now that they would have boldness to de declare even now, I'm ready to change something in my heart. I'm ready to give it over to the Lord. I'm ready to surrender my will to his will. So Father, I pray now that you would touch even the least of us move by your spirit even now have your way in our hearts while your heads bowed your eyes closed if you're one today and you want me to pray for you need me to pray for you would you lift your hand or would you just come quickly very quickly as we wrap up come on Hallelujah. if that's you 